So we're not meeting tomorrow night. Good evening. We'd like to call the Durham City Council meeting to order at 7.01 p.m. Tuesday, uh, January 20th. And certainly want to welcome all of you that are here with us this evening. If we just take a moment for silent meditation, please. Thank you. Ask Councilman Brown if he would lead us in the pledge. Madam Clerk, if you call the roll, please. Mayor Bell. Present. Mayor Pro Tem Cole McFadden. Councilmember Brown. Councilmember Katati. Councilmember Davis. Councilmember Moffitt. And Councilmember Shul. This evening we have the uh, distinct pleasure, pleasure of uh, presenting and announcing an award. I'm going to ask Patrick Biker and company to, if you join me. Hi, how are you doing? In 2011, Convention South Magazine created a Reader's Choice Award for the best meeting sites in the South. Over 175 sites were nominated by meeting professionals for exemplary service for group events with 400,800 voters participating in the selection process. And we're pleased to announce tonight that for 2014, the Global Spectrum Management of the Durham Convention Center received the 2014 Reader's Choice Award for Best Meeting Sites in the South for 2014. It was done by Convention South Magazine. And Patrick, as the chair of the Convention Center, I'd like to welcome you for any comments and certainly your comments also. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Mayor Bell, Mayor Pro Tem Cole McFadden, members of the City Council. This is a, uh, just a tremendous privilege to stand before you today and receive this award from uh, the uh, Convention South. It is um, remarkable, given where the Convention Center was a few years ago, 
uh, that we are operating this efficiently, effectively, and with, outst with outstanding customer service, which resulted in this award. Uh, I believe we are the only convention center in North Carolina to receive this recognition. And so in addition to all the other outstanding amenities we have downtown and throughout Durham, we have a world-class convention center, folks. Um, we have a convention center that is not the biggest, not as big as Charlotte, not as big as Raleigh, but in terms of quality, we can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any convention center in the South. And uh, it is only because of the outstanding team we have uh, that uh, we've been able to achieve this. I'd like to recognize uh, our board members because uh, we have an outstanding board at the convention center uh, these days. Uh, keeping us on the straight and narrow uh, financially are Don Paffenroth and Dick Ford, if you all would if you both would stand up in the back. They do a great job along with Al Bass uh, on our board of making sure that we stretch our taxpayer dollars as far as possible. And then in regards to marketing uh, on our board, we have Alice Sharp, uh, Bill Kalkov, and Dara White, who do an outstanding job thinking about uh, strategically how to market the convention center and how to uh, keep it moving forward. I also want to acknowledge the great leadership we have from uh, the city uh, administration with Joel Reitzer and General Services and Gina Probst. And then, of course, on the county side, Assistant County Manager Drew Cummings does a great job. And now I'd like to turn it over to Jen Noble, because she is uh, really the reason why we're here tonight, our outstanding leader at the Convention Center. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, uh, members of the City Council. Um, I just wanted to uh, recognize um, that we are very excited to uh, win this uh, award this year. Um, since February of 2011, Global Spectrum's team has dedicated themselves to the pursuit of excellence in our attention to detail, quality of food and beverage operations, and customer service. We look forward to the future opportunities uh, to grow our business in the downtown area and create uh, greater economic impact for the city as new hotels come on board. Uh, we recognize the support and leadership of the city and the county of Durham, um, as well as the Convention Center Authority Board, uh, in order to achieve the success for the center and exceed our expe expectations for our guests. We are a proud partner of the city um, and the Durham community, and the, we share the vision for the future of the city. Thank you for your continued support and commitment to Global Spectrum in our efforts and with the approval of our contract extension to manage the center through 2019. Thank you on behalf of Global Spectrum. I'm going to ask the Mayor Pro Tem if she would uh, join me at the podium. I am honored to proclaim Dr. Brian Lamont Johnson Day. Ms. Johnson, would you and Dr. Johnson's executive assistant and the other family members come? This is just an honor because this is the second college president or chancellor that we've honored from Durham uh, this year. And it reads, whereas Dr. Brian L. Johnson grew up with his sister Jennifer and his mother, Gwendolyn, who possessed a deep abiding faith in God in the few gardens development in East Durham, North Carolina, and whereas Dr. Johnson had big dreams to go beyond his environment, growing up without a father, sought male mentors who took on the role of father figures in his life, to assist him in his growth in areas of stability, intellectual, spiritual, and cultural insight. And whereas in 2000, Dr. Brian Johnson married his college sweetheart, Shamika Barnes, and became a father to two sons, Brian Asa and Nathan Morgan Kudesh, as he reflected on fatherhood by quoting, I want my sons to think my dad is there and whatever happens, even if I make a mistake, it doesn't matter because this guy will protect me, back me, and support me. 
How awesome. And whereas Dr. Brian Johnson graduated from Durham High School, received his Bachelor of Arts degree in English from Johnson C. Smith University in Charlotte in 1995, received his master's degree in English from the University of Wisconsin at Madison in 1998, and earned his PhD degree specializing in 17th to 19th century American literature from the University of South Carolina at Columbia. That was in 2003. And whereas he held administrative and academic posts in the following capacities, Vice President for Strategic Planning and Institutional Effectiveness, Assistant Provost for Academic Affairs, Associate Vice President for Academic Affairs, Chief of Staff, Director, Coordinator, and Associate and Assistant Professor of English, has received numerous administrative and academic awards, fellowships, named American Council of Education Fellow, Indiana University, Purdue University, Indianapolis Chancellor's Office, IU Lilly Family School of Philanthropy. Philanthropy, please excuse me and Association of American Schools and Colleges and Universities Millennium Leadership Initiative Fellow, a non-resident fellow within the W.E.B. Du Bois Institute for African and African American Studies at Harvard, and an Andrew W. Mellon, Benjamin May's postdoctoral fellowship, just to name a few, <laughs> and serves on the Greenville College Illinois Board of Trustees, and whereas he is the editor and author of seven academic and scholarly books, and has also published an article in the Raleigh News and Observer titled, A Young Man Apart, A World Apart, describing his experiences hailing from inner city Durham, North Carolina, and whereas Tuskegee University has historical ties to the city of Durham through the visit and writings of Booker T. Washington, the Washington Papers from 1911, Durham, North Carolina, a city of Negro enterprises. And echoing the words of Booker T. Washington, Dr. Johnson concurs that success is not measured by the height you achieve, but by the depths from which you come. And whereas Tuskegee University, the home to the only school of veterinary and medicine at a historical black college, and also awards degrees in engineering and agriculture, founded in 1881 by Booker T. Washington in Tuskegee, Alabama. And whereas the city of Durham extends congratulations to Dr. Brian Lamont Johnson as the seventh president of Tuskegee University, a dynamic academic leader with a strong stature as a scholar, manager, and administrator, and who is one of the youngest individuals to be selected president of an HBCU in recent years. Now, therefore, I, William V. Bill Bell, mayor of the greatest city in the United States of America, the city of Durham, do hereby proclaim January 20th, 2015, as Dr. Brian Lamont Johnson Day in Durham, and hereby urge all citizens to take special note of this observance. What a blessed day this is, Ms. Johnson. Would you like to say something? I'm not really, because <laughs> I'm not the talker. My son is the talker. <laughs> and uh, he uh, always been a person that loves to talk and loves to, uh, even as a little boy, I was called to the school several times. Because <laughs> <laughs> he was talking, he would do his homework, but he would uh, come back, uh, you know, try to help somebody else. Uh -huh. And uh, but he always had that in him, that he wanted to be a, pr a professor. I always call him the professor. <laughs> and uh, but then, he, uh, as he grew older, he wanted to be president 
uh, uh, college, any college. And so, you know, he, he's always asked questions. He wanted to know the reason for the 5W, what, when, where, why, and how, <laughs> and all of that. But I'm glad that he, I know that he was going to be somebody. Amen. Yeah, we all are somebody, That's you right. know, even my daughter. This is my daughter, Jennifer, and this is my sister, Marilyn Slaughter, and this is his secretary. His executive, executive secretary. What she, she can explain. Would you like to yes. say, tell us who you are? I'm Verna Little, Dr. Johnson's executive assistant, and on behalf of Dr. Johnson, thank you very much for this recognition. Mayor, as well as city councilman, it's very well deserved as you can see from his awesome background. He would have been here this evening, but due to a commitment, he's speaking at Clemson University and wanted very much to, for us to offer his deep appreciation for this great honor. Thank you. And she came all the way from Tuskegee to be with us tonight. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Recognize council persons for comments, the mayor pro tem for one. Yes, I'm proud of what these two young people have accomplished, um, becoming college presidents and having gone through the Durham public school system and having stayed on course. And I just congratulate you Ms. Johnson, for what you did, because you, in essence, uh, raised him as a single parent. And it took the whole community, the whole village, to help raise him. So you did an outstanding job. Thank you so much. I'd like to thank also the Durham Community Martin Luther King Steering Committee for the peaceful commemorative MLK March yesterday. And I'd like to thank the Herald Sun for recognizing who I was this time. Uh, instead of just saying I was a participant, I actually had a name. Um, and I shared who I was. So thanks to the Herald Sun for, uh, for doing that. And then the celebration at uh, First Presbyterian Church um, was just awesome. And the children sang and uh, people prayed. And it was just wonderful. And then last night, um, the celebration at Peace Missionary Baptist Church was just wonderful. Five students received scholarships, and it's noteworthy to uh, congratulate the Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority for sponsoring one of the scholarships. And yesterday morning, one of our own, uh, Dr. James Johnson, was the guest speaker for the uh, Prayer breakfast, I think, is, is that what we're going to? Echo, interfaith, okay, I just keep praying um, for the interfaith breakfast, and he was simply superb. Um, we are blessed in Durham. All over the city yesterday, people were, were uh, volunteering. Uh, I think White Rock Baptist Church, uh, that's a church that uh, two of our deputies attend, uh, had an ad in the paper, I think it was your church, right, Wanda? Inviting citizens to join them and volunteering at different venues. I know Habitat for Humanity, um, Healing with Care, and some other kinds of uh, sites. And so it was just a blessing to see that kind of spirit, uh, which is what Dr. King was all about and what he expects us to do. Not just crowding all, everything in one day, but sort of spreading it out uh, throughout the year, and it will certainly make a difference. Thank you. Welcome. 
uh, recognize any other comments? If not, uh, entertain priority items by the city manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, everyone. No priority items. Likewise, city attorney. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. On your agenda tonight, agenda item number six is the proposed sale of no-build easements at 505 Rigsby Avenue. Um, I just want to add for the record uh, that additional legal authority to enter in that transaction comes from Charter Section 86 of the Durham City Charter. Um, and just to advise council that uh, the city attorney's office is working with the developer to finalize uh, that document uh, based in part on conversations that we had at the work session. That was just information, not a priority. That's right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I mean, it didn't require action. That's yeah. what I you know. I uh, likewise recognize the city clerk. No items, Mr. Mayor. Uh, in that case, we'll proceed with the agenda. Uh, consent agenda being first. Uh, city council persons can remove an item. We'll discuss it later. If someone in the public can remove an item. Likewise, we'll discuss that later also. Uh, read the heading as usual. Item one is interlocal agreement among City of Durham, Research Triangle, Regional Public Transportation Authority, and Town of Chapel Hill for the procurement of buses, bus equipment, and parts. Item two is resolution approving City of Durham data 2014 Title VI program update. Item three is North Durham water reclamation facility generator improvements. Item four is contract SR60 Hope Valley and Keystone lift station abandonments and West Street sewer outfall repair. Item five is North Durham water reclamation facility and Acadia Street Waterline replacement contract awarded to the John R. McAdams Company, Inc. <coughs> Item six, proposed sale of no-bill easements at 505 Rigsby Avenue, parcel number 104933 to Liberty Warehouse Apartments, LLC. Item eight is contract with Mid-Atlantic Associates, Inc. for implementation of EPA Brownfields Assessment Grant. Item nine is contract SD 2014-01, Municipal Separate Storm Sewer System, MS4 Inspections. Item six is Chronos Sales Software License and Service Agreement. Item 11 is agreement with Cramden Institute, Inc. for computer donation. <coughs> Entertain a motion for the approval of consent agenda items. It's been properly moved and second. Madam Clerk, we open the vote. Close the vote. Uh, before we adjourn, it passes I, seven to zero. Thank you. Before we adjourn, I, I would uh, like a, an excused absence for the work session this coming Thursday. Second. Been proper move and second. Madam Clerk, we open the vote. Close the vote. Passes seven to zero. Uh, any other items to come before the council? If not, we should leave. We're adjourned at seven twenty-two p.m. Thank you. Yeah.